So how do you tell the difference between this, which is a fully rational story of unrealized expectations, and the irrational exuberance view of the world? Is there any difference? It's not in the bust, right? You can't look at the bust and say, ah, the bust, it must have been ir irrational. Because the bust's going to happen either way. The only sensible way I know to think about that question was, was it reasonable to think that this was going to happen? That it wasn't reasonable to think that rents would be high enough in the future to justify this P0. The way I like to think about it is this, right? The price at any date, you can always write this. The price at any date, T, or it doesn't matter, is equal to the rental rate at date T plus the rental rate at the next period, 1 minus delta over 1 plus R, plus RT plus 2, 1 minus delta squared over 1 plus R, plus dot, 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 RT plus, I don't know, N minus 1 times 1 minus delta to the n minus 1 over 1 plus r to the n minus 1 plus rt plus n, I'm sorry, pt plus n, 1 minus delta to the n over 1 plus r to the n. Okay? So that is a way to think about the world. That is, today's price has to be justified by whatever rents I'm going to collect for some period of time, and then some terminal value, right? And anybody who ever's done business valuation or ever bought a business knows this is the classic spreadsheet formula the guys from McKinsey use, right? Everybody knows that, right? They say, all right, this is my cash flow this year. Here's my expectations of cash flows next year. Here's what our model is going to do next year. Here's where the model is going to do the following year. And then I got this terminal value, right? And anybody who ever bought a business, unless you want to be completely fleeced, knows that this is where all the bodies are buried, right? Right here. This is the terminal value is where you bury all the bodies. And all the assumptions that go into those values is really where all the shenanigans tends to happen, right? So you've got to look hard at those numbers. The same is true here. That is, think about this as, I see a world, prices are up, but rents are either down or unchanged. Right? That is, the current prices are high, but the current market isn't supporting high rents. And whenever you have that, and the foreseeable future isn't supporting high rents, and in you know, this is all being driven by people must be thinking the world is going to be really good sometime from now. Well, that could be true. Could be true that the, the, the great demand is going to come in the future. I don't have a good reason for it. You know, this is like the company where the guy says, we ain't never made any money. We're not thinking we're going to make any money for the next three years. But, man, we're going to make a killing after that, right? It's like, well, you know, I got to be, that may happen. That there are some companies that have done that historically, so you, it's not a completely outlandish story. But you gotta be careful. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same story. It's all these things are always the same. It's a question is, is it reasonable to think it's an ex ante question, not an ex post question, is the way I'm saying it about it. Was it reasonable at the time to think that prices could be high enough in the future or rents equivalently high enough in the future to justify the high price today, even though the current market conditions don't seem to generate such high rents? No, that, I'm going to go there next, okay? That's where I'm going. You're good at anticipating where we're heading next. But... The point I'm trying to make here is the idea that we had this period where buyers were buying based on prices going up and sellers were producing based on high prices isn't really an indication of good
good, wrong, right, whatever. It's, that's the equilibrium has to look like that, whether it's rational or irrational. The fact that there was this crash doesn't tell me whether those expectations were reasonable or not. It tells me people were wrong, but for long-lived assets, there's lots to be wrong about, right? That, that we are going to be wrong on long-lived assets, okay? Yeah. Well, well, they can because the way, to, the way to think about it, and this actually is a key for looking at whether you think these markets are going to crash, I think. In this model, we have a lot of people, well, think about it like in the housing context. A lot of people are living in houses they can't afford. That is, if rents, if rents were to rise to the level consistent with the price, they can't live there. Which means in equilibrium, they got to sell them to somebody. So you better be thinking about who those somebodies are who are going to be buying those houses that all the people living in them today can't afford. And if you can't think about that, you should be worried, right? Because that, you know, that's not to say that couldn't happen. Maybe they're going to get rich enough in the future that they can afford it. Or maybe a bunch of rich people are going to move in who will be able to afford it. But you better have a story. It's just like when the guy's trying to sell you a company. They may be right that there's a big V out here. There's a terminal value that's big. But you better have a story for it. And the longer this goes, remember, this number is less than one. This number is a lot less than one the further out you go. And these numbers are low. So in order to make up for these low numbers in the near term, you need a really big number. And the further out it is, the bigger it's got to be. So that's the problem. Is you really, it's really an ex ante question. So when you look back at the housing boom and you say, well, geez, it was just an irrational bubble. Well, easy to say after the fact. It's easier to say, in fact, correct to say, people clearly were wrong. That is, there were unmet expectations. Whether those expectations were rational or not really can't be answered ex post. Either something we expected was reasonable to expect and it just didn't happen. Yeah. Correct, exactly. That's what I mean. They were wrong about what did happen. That doesn't mean they were wrong about what could have happened. But they could be wrong about what could have happened. That's the point. And this whole debate about a bubble versus not is a debate about what could have happened. Right? 